Metabolomics is a study of the metabolites in an organism. This is the study of metabolites that are the chemical products of metabolic pathways in a specific part of the organism. The composition and concentration of these metabolites may vary in the body in response to injury, stress or any environmental stimuli. There can be two types of metabolomic studies. Either it can be global, which deals with uh, changing or varying levels of certain metabolites over time or marketed uh, metabolomics that focuses on selective number of metabolites. The metabolite itself is the intermediate and the product of a metabolic pathway. So any small organic molecule or chemical that may be a peptide, oligonucleotide, sugar or, or something that can be uh, transferred as part of metabolic pathways can be of two particular types either a primary metabolite or a secondary metabolite. So a primary metabolite is something that is directly involved in essential normal growth, development and reproduction of the organism. For example, amino acids and sugars. A secondary metabolite is a chemical compound which is not essential for the growth under normal laboratory conditions. So it is often derived from the primary metabolites. It can be something like fatty acids, which is a type of a polycheck polyketide. So there are four classes of secondary metabolic compounds which are alkaloids, the polyketides, terpenes and non-riposomal peptides. So they may be often uniquely found in a specific organism or a small family of related organisms. They are not essential but they often serve important ecological roles. An envelope term for all these metabolites or something that is a complete set of all these small molecule metabolites is called a metabolome. There are many things that we can learn from studying metabolites. For example, the evolutionary conservation of metabolism across many life forms, which is very relevant for evolutionary studies. We can also study the networks of metabolic uh, feedback pathways that regulate gene expression and also mediate signaling between the organisms. We can also study some cellular biochemistry or reflect the effect of some drug on the organism, like the effective or the affected uh, uh, metabolites on the application of a drug. Now, we may be able to collect and study all the metabolic compounds together, but for the purpose of certain biochemical studies, we often prefer to select a particular number of metabolites and then study their pathways. This is called a metabolic profiling, where we can identify and quantify a selective number of predefined metabolites. There can also be a provision of metabolic fingerprinting, which deals with a high throughput analysis to provide some classification. For example, we can study the metabolic uh, information of certain samples and then classify them as a diseased sample or a healthy sample. We can also have metabolic footprinting, which is the analysis of the extruded metabolites that are basically metabolites excreted by the organism. So if it is growing in a culture, it will basically include the environmental and the growth substances that are around it. So this is uh, different from metabolite target analysis, which deals with the qualitative and quantitative analysis of one or several metabolites related to a metabolic reaction. Metabonomics is another term which deals with only the quantitative analysis of metabolites in response to a biological perturbation, which might be a diseased or therapeutic treatment or perhaps a genetic modification. These metabolites may be either polar or nonpolar. For example, fatty acids and lipids are nonpolar. Meanwhile, sugars and nucleotides are polar metabolites. They can be separated on the basis of their polarity using chromatography. In the field of global metabolomics, we try to see visualize our entire metabolic network in terms of um in terms of a molecular map of relationships between the ions of the molecules of interest. 
Molecular net networking is a computational strategy that aids visualization and interpretation of the chemical repertoire that can be detected using mass spectrometry. So in simple terms, molecular network is a visualization strategy for the untargeted mass spectrometry data. We have developed the world's largest repository and data analysis tool for such uh, tandem mass spectrometry data named as Global Natural Product Social Molecular Network or GNPS database. It is used to decipher the metabolic uh, cryptic metabolites uh, when they are during experiments. So we can probably gain some information about the molecular network using the information we already have in the GNPS database. In essential terms, what we are trying to do is take a mixture of molecules and then expose them to liquid chromatography mass spectrometry and tandem mass spectrometry, which is further analyzed across a GNPS database in order to derive the molecular networks between the molecular, uh, between the molecules of our interest. So this will be able to generate certain relationships that we can either further research uh, in biosynthetic uh, or in synthesized chemically and test them, or we can uh, try to research more on them with more in silico experiments. Molecular network is like a BLAST tool and GNPS is like GenBank database. In case of targeted metabolomics, we try to quantitatively identify and analyze some targeted metabolic compounds in the organism. So we're able to gather information on the composition of the metabolites, which are closely associated with certain biological activities that can vary dramatically under uh, different physiological conditions. So there are many methods by which we can identify the metabolic product of certain uh, metabolic pathways. For example, in case where we have a cryptic biosynthetic gene cluster, we can try to have a gene knockout and then compare the metabolic profile of that pathway with the wild type. So basically we try to mutate the wild type by using a gene knockout mechanism and then we compare their uh, metabolic profile and see which uh, particular uh, segment of metabolites is or protein peptides is giving certain intensity peaks for the mass spectrometry data. We can also try to express some pathway specific activator and then compare the metabolic profile of the uh, of the wild type with the activator and then oh, another one without the activator. This is almost similar to trying to heterologously e express a gene and then comparing the metabolic profile. We can also try to develop a reconstituted pathway inside the lab and not the organism. So we have an in vitro pathway reconstitution where we try to model the predicted precursors and expose them to some enzymes and then try to see what kind of products we get.